Hi guys, Tracy here, and I am working with the Scrapbooking Workshops Your Way Beautiful Friendship Kit by Close to My Heart, and I am going to be attempting to scrapbook three two-page layouts with an extra two inserts, oh my goodness, all this afternoon. It is 1.09 right now. I'm going to show you my supplies really quickly and then I'm going to turn on my timer and see how quickly I can scrapbook these three pages, one of which has two uh, Project Life type inserts in it, or pocket page inserts. I'm just going to quickly show you my materials. So this is the kit. From Close to My Heart. Close to My Heart did send me this kit. It's called Workshops Your Way and it comes, I've shown it in detail on another video, but it comes with a lot of paper. It comes with some die cut pieces. It comes with some little cutouts to hold the places for your photos. It comes with some ribbon. It comes with some uh, bow embellishments. And uh, then it also comes with this package with this uh, handout of directions. These directions tells you exactly what to cut and how to cut it for each of these pages. On your mark, get set, start scrapping! So here we go. The timer has started and obviously it's moving faster because I am moving faster. So the numbers that you see are accurate. Uh, and you'll get to see exactly how long this is taking. So the very first step in the instructions says to remove all the strips from all of the paper. So I am just going to go ahead and fully surrender myself to this process and do everything the way that they say to do it. And uh, what I found when I made a card kit by Close to My Heart this way is that they think of everything and you really don't have to be strategizing or anything. You can just blindly do what they say to do and everything will turn out okay. <laughs> it's like, oh, if only part of life could be that easy. Um, so I'm just following those instructions. So you do have to use some of the little manufacturer strips. So it's just telling you which ones to cut. These second ones that I'm cutting into pieces end up being for cards. So you can make in addition to the three layouts and two inserts that I talked about at the beginning of this video, you can also make two other cards. Although the cards do require a separate stamp and die set, but you could just use whatever stamps and dies you have on hand uh, and still follow the uh, card designs. So I might do those as well, but for now I'm just trying to get these three layouts done. So it does say to cut apart all of those journaling pieces. So here I am cutting all those apart too. And there are two of them that you have to use specifically, and I'm just going to put the rest of them aside. And I am going to end up digging into those as well. So now you just follow the instructions. It tells you what way to orient the page in terms of what they mean when they say that is um, which side is up. And also sometimes it's orientated according to which direction the stripes are going in. So these you're supposed to cut these strips and it tells you the, it both shows you visually the layout of those strips on the paper, as you can see in gray over there, but it also tells you the exact measurements so that you know what to measure and I'm cutting off on the like over to the right of my trimmer instead of see here I'm I'm cutting to the left of my trimmer and it depends on how anything less than two inches I usually cut over to the right and if it's more than two inches I cut it over to the left and that's just because you can get a better squared edge if you um, if you have the majority of your paper butt up against that edge at the top there and the edge is bigger on the on the right on the left hand side so that's the way I like to do it so I'm moving on to, I think I'm on the third piece of paper now, just as I said, blindly following uh, the instructions. And so the second piece, I'm also going to cut uh, with the yellow face up and basically just following those instructions. So now this one calls for a couple of squares that are then cut on a diagonal. And so I'm cutting the squares first, and now you have to measure in one inch. So I'm just using my trimmer to measure that in on two opposite sides, and then you create an angle with your trimmer and just cut it down. And then you end up with two identical shaped, um, weird shapes, triangular-ish. 
And those are for the cards, so I actually didn't have to cut those, but I'm just following the instructions without really thinking about it. So that's why I'm cutting those. If you really wanted to make sure that you didn't waste time, if you didn't plan to make the cards, you could just look and see what was what. But uh, so here's where the orientation matters. So it does say to run the stripes this way. So that's the way I'm running them. And now the remaining card uh, pieces are all for um for backgrounds and stuff so i'm just checking to see if i need to cut any of this white cardstock so i'm just taking a look uh, because it does tell you to cut one one piece of it and i just want to make sure that i'm not spending a whole lot of time cutting out pieces for the cards if i'm not going to actually use them and so it says to cut them so i'm going to go ahead and cut them it also shows how you would lay out your dies if you were making the cards and I'm not going to make the cards. So all of those little shaped pieces with letters in them, I'm not going to do. So there we go. I am finished cutting and I put my trimmer away and in theory, I won't need it again. So isn't that nice? <laughs> Uh, so I started by grabbing my photos and I am going to make these pages unique to me in a few different ways. And I would suggest that that you, if you're going to make one of these kits, that you consider uh, customizing it. You don't have to, you can just do what they say to do. But I found that w one way in which it's really hard to do what they say to do is that I don't always have exactly the same sizes and shapes of photos that they're asking you to use. So for example, for this project, I was supposed to have three 4x4 photos and two 4x6 photos. And as you can see, I have five 4x4 photos. And is that what I have? Yeah, five of them. And uh, so I am just improvising, but I'm still following the sketch that they, like the design that they've that they've set out. And as you can see, I'm also outlining some of the pieces, which is not in the instructions either, but it, that's what I do to my pages. And so this will make this page look a lot more like one of my pages, even though I wasn't the scrapbooker who designed this page. And so I'm going to go ahead and outline that. And now I did make a mistake. And so if I hadn't made a mistake here, I might've finished these pages even sooner. Um, so what I did was I accidentally, when I was outlining that yellow piece of paper, I outlined all four sides of it instead of only three. And so I reached over to my scrap. So these are not pieces from my cut. I left all of those pre-planned cut pieces off that you can see them at the very top of your screen right now. I did not take this from there because if I did, I'd be missing a piece later. So instead what I did was I reached over to my scraps that are over to the left and I grabbed that piece of yellow and I just did a patchwork job there of covering over my outlining lines with some plain paper. And it took me a few minutes just to figure out how to line up the pattern and cut the piece that was the right size and so on. So there we go. I also made another mistake when I was outlining or gluing something. I got a little bit of um, blue, actually it was glue, uh, left a little bit of black mark on the page and that's covered by the photo right now, but I'm actually scooching these photos over and so it will be visible, but that's okay. Your page doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So you can see that little bit of black sticking out from under the picture of Sophie blowing up the, uh, the, the floatable thing, the inflatable. So here I'm only going to outline three sides so that I don't have to go to all that trouble of making a patch. So there we go. And you'll notice that I actually scooched these photos over a little bit more than what they were asking me to in the in the instructions. And that's just because I like that look better. And so this is an example of, you know, personalizing it and making it yours. 
So uh, I really like to scooch my photos over when I'm doing a double page. I like them to read as though they cross that divide of one page to the other and make it look more like one cohesive page and outlining all the way around the outside of it without outlining those inner edges like the, where the where the right page meets the left page is one way in which I do that kind of give that cohesive look. And so other than scooching the photos over and adding my outlining, you can see that I'm really sticking to the sketch or the, I guess it's not really sketch, but the overall layout here of this design. And uh, I do, as you see, have different photos, but I'm able to arrange them in a way that's pretty similar to the way that uh, the original designer had set them out. These stickers, because uh, be, I'll tell you why I'm doing this to these stickers. So I'm actually putting powder on the bottom of them so that they're not as sticky. The reason is that I might change my mind about these stickers. So my goal here today is to get these three pages scrapped as minimally as I can, but still looking like I could put them in my album. I have a feeling I'm going to want to uh, personalize these even more, but I want this layout, uh, all three of them, to really look okay just as they are. And so I'm following the instructions and I really don't want to spend a whole lot of time personalizing it at this point. I'm going to personalize it minimally so that I could put this in my album and it wouldn't look too far out of place as far as style goes. Every scrapbooker has a different style and so I wouldn't expect the scrapbooker who designed this page to have a style that's going to look exactly like my style of all my other pages. So because of that I'm going to want to personalize this somewhat. I just don't know how much. So I don't want to inflate my time here because this is a bit of an experiment for me to see how quickly can one scrapbook if they did follow one of these page kit uh, with instructions. And so if I spend too much time personalizing, I'm not going to get a good read of how quick it is. And so these are some things that I'm I'm adding these embellishments here because they're on the on the um, sample page, but I might come back and change my mind. So whenever needed, I'm taking the sticky off so that I can just use my own adhesive, which is a little bit lighter. I'm using a really light hand with my adhesive today so that if I have to go back and change anything, I can. I'll read you my journaling as I write it out. And I'm using the same journaling spot that they had called for in the in the recipe. It says, spending time at Fee and Brian's house while they travel is one of the highlights of our summer. This year, because of timing, it was only two days, but we had a blast playing in the pool and eating all the treats they leave for us. We are so spoiled by them. The only thing that would make it better would be if they were actually home. <laughs> We miss them when they leave, when they leave us with their house, but we really do. They have a very nice house and it's decorated nicely, very tropical. And so it feels like we're away on vacation. So that's it for that one. Now I'm moving on to the next one. So at the 46 minute point, I'm starting layout number two, not too shabby. I'm going to outline around three edges, three edges, Tracy, stop. Good, good, good. That impulse control is tricky for me sometimes. <laughs> and this paper is actually not the same um, all the way around. What I mean is, um, see how the top and the bottom is not the same. So just if I want both sides to look like they match up, just make sure that you're, if you're making this kit, that you're just mindful of that. And I'm always mindful of that when I'm making a double page uh, layout that I want both background pages to line up. Just be mindful of the pattern and make sure that you've got the top at the top and the bottom at the bottom. I am again outlining these strips that were pre-cut and the instructions do tell you exactly how many inches up from the bottom these strips are and so on. Um, I'm just eyeballing it because that's the way I scrapbook. I don't ever measure anything. And the recipe, as you can see from the, from the image in the top, it calls for that pink paper. Basically, they're it calls for these three broad strips of paper that run span the whole length of the layout but I'm actually going to make my pink 
strips, uh, this one that I'm outlining right now, will be shorter so that there's a little bit of space on either side of the pink band that goes across this layout. And that's just my own touch, like that's just what is pleasing to my eye. I like that. It gives a little bit more interest than having the strips go all the way across. So see how I'm just going to move that in? I moved it in and and uh, bent the paper a little bit so that I'd know where I needed to trim that. And now you'll see what I mean when I lay them out there. So the pink paper is smaller. It's shorter, not as wide. Oh, how many different ways can you say that it's smaller? <laughs> shorter, smaller, not as wide. There we go. So I just attached these two pattern papers to one another and I'm overlapping them so that uh, the top edge of the blue where the outlining is on the blue strip is covered by the floral strip. I'm using my grid mat to help me place these so that they're squared off. Usually when I do a double page layout, I, it has more of a graphic look to it. Things are more symmetrical and lined up than they are on my regular single page layouts. And so I heavily use my grid mat as I'm composing. And this layout, as you can see from looking above, it has quite a bit of structure and symmetry. So I'm trying to replicate that. I like how that looks. Now there's a little bit of the background paper showing here. I'm just going to trim it off rather than trying to lift up those pieces and shimmy them over a little bit. So there we go. Now I'm taking out my photos. I also don't have the right photos for this project either. So it calls for uh, three four by fours and two four by sixes. And I have uh, four, three, th three four by sixes and one four by four. So I have quite a bit of a different layout, but I'm still going to be able to get a really similar look as you'll be able to see here. So the page over on the left is almost identical. And then the page over on the right, I have a landscape four by six taking the place of two side by side four by fours. And then my four by four is kind of in almost the same place as the other four by four would be. Now my printer didn't print these out with an even border around them. I printed borderless and that gives me a really weird, I don't like printing borderless on my picture mate charm because it doesn't do a, a reliable job. So I'm just out, I'm fixing the border and then I'm matting these and this is not in the instructions. As you can see, their photos are not matted, but I felt like I wanted the, the photos to have a little bit more substance and I'm really doing a very, very skinny bright blue, dark blue um, outline around them, matting around them. And uh, that is because I just felt like they needed more substance with that really heavy blue pattern paper at the bottom of the page anchoring everything. I felt like I needed some balance up at the top of the page. So that's just me adding my own thing. And I will mat all of these photos both in white and in blue. And in doing so, I'm using some of the white cardstock that I'm supposed to be saving for my next project, but you'll see what I do about that. So this is cardstock that came in the kit. And then the blue cardstock that you see me pulling out here uh, is actually from the cardstock add-on that they sent me. So this cardstock actually doesn't come in the kit, it's, uh, but it does coordinate with the beautiful friendship uh, collection that you can get from Close to My Heart. So I'm just going to overlap these two um, basically atmosphere photos. So they basically just kind of set the tone of the story that I'm telling. And then here are the people photos over here. And I decided to pop this one up for a little bit of extra interest. It's Scott and his mom at the trail that we were walking on. And now you can see that one of those pieces of white paper that I um, 
that I cut at the beginning is supposed to go here and hold some journaling. But I did, I felt like that was a little bit too plain. So I went back to those cut aparts and I pulled out this one and it has some nice floral detailing on it as well as some lines. So I'm going to mat that in white the same way that I did with my photos. And you know what? I'm going to go ahead and mat it in the blue as well. So that way all of my major elements are double matted in both white and in this beautiful deep blue color. And that just helps the journaling to hold up to the, um, it kind of holds its weight against all of those photos and helps it be noticed. So there we go. Now my journaling, I'll read it for you. It says, nothing beats a beautiful day in Victoria Park. This Mother's Day tradition is an opportunity to be at one with nature, even if not everyone wants their photo taken. And what I'm referring to there is my daughter's look on her face of disgust at us for taking her picture. <laughs> Apparently we're horrible for, <laughs> for wanting her to pose for a picture. Um, if she had her way, she would be not there she would be skulking off to the side someplace not not in the photo but sometimes we usually respect her desire but on, sometimes especially on occasions like mother's day and birthdays and stuff we make her suck it up and be in the photos she, it's just a phase she'll she won't be like that forever i know but uh yeah <laughs> We live with it in the meantime. So as you can see this sticker, I also put powder on it just in case I decide to pull it up. And if I were to pull it up, it would be to put something else behind it, like maybe a doily or a tag or something. So I'm just being mindful that I might wanna move these things around, but I am sticking pretty close to the design. I am adding some outlining on this sticker in particular. I also popped this one up with a foam adhesive. I really like how this page looks. Now they have the title sweet and I thought about going into my regular letter sticker stash like looking at my thickers and picking something out but I really love how the word sweet looks with that blue pattern paper that runs across the bottom of the page. I think that it, it balances out nicely and I don't think I have any letters in that color. So I thought, well, I'll stick with sweet and I'll just work that into my title. So here's another sticker that is supposed to go on my journaling. So I'll just put it here. As you can see, it's exactly in exactly the same place on the other page. And I did outline it and I'm just, what I'm doing there is I'm reaching across. Oh, look at that. You can see the muscles in my forearm. Isn't that weird? Um, I'm looking for the date because my computer is right at the top of my screen there. And so I'm just checking to see the date. And it was May 13th of this year. So even though it's already popped up and I couldn't stamp all that well, I went ahead and stamped the date. It's pretty messy, but that's okay. You can make it out. So this one is almost ready. Now I have these really tiny pop dots. They are from Stampin' Up! And they're very, very small, but they're still a little bit too big. So I'm actually going to take my scissors and cut across a whole row of them so that I have a whole bunch of halves. And then I'm going to... these. These are really difficult to work with because they're so sticky. And I think just because they're such tiny shapes, there's more surface area that's on the edge that's sticky than there is on the top that's covered by the by the waxy coating and like the the pull the um the stuff that you pull off. I'm I can't think of the word for it. But anyhow, um these are really difficult to work with for that purpose, but I really wanted to pop this title up off of my page. I just felt like it needed it. That shadow that it casts is so beautiful and it adds that extra detail, especially where this is a this is a page that is um, less embellished than what most of my pages are, so this adds a little bit extra interest to it. It takes a long time to get all those backing little pieces off, but I got them off. I'm going to place it in almost the same place. I did bring it down. I like to overlap things a little bit more than most people. So I pulled it down so that it would look more pleasing to my eye. 
And then I decided to, I had these sticky keys, which are by October afternoon. And these I thought coordinated quite nicely with the blue in the word sweet. And so my subtitle here is uh, day at the park. So the title becomes sweet day at the park. And I just used some wax paper to decide how that's going to fit. And then I'm just going to try to kind of space it out the best that I can so that you can see it, but that it's not interfering with anything. I don't want to cover up the moon and the stars that are on the side of that tree. Somebody did that to that tree and it's kind of like a half dying tree that had been split. Like somebody had taken a big chunk off of it and then somebody else came along and put some artwork inside of it and it was really nice. So now these tag stickers were supposed to go on the previous layout but I didn't put them on because I felt like they didn't have enough substance for that spot but I do like them here so I'm putting them here instead of two uh, flowers from the navy blue uh, chipboard were supposed to go there. So at the one hour and 35 minute mark, here we are starting a double page layout number three. And I just went back into the cardstock that again does not come with this kit. Um, but I went into the cardstock and I grabbed these two pieces of gray. The reason I need these two pieces is that I did cut into the white cardstock that was supposed to be the background for these pages um, in order to mat all of the elements in the page before. So if you if that was a concern, then you could have either not matted them or gone into into my stash to mat them either way. Um, so again, I'm going to try to remember to only outline three of these edges because this layout has uh, strips across it as well. And I don't have the right photos again for this one either. Uh, this project requires one three by four photo and two four by six photos, and then a whole bunch more for the inserts that go along with this one. So I am starting by outlining all of the elements. This will give this page more of a Mercy Tiara kind of feel to it and pull all of these patterns together on the page. And it also emphasizes the fact that this design spans the gap in my, in my uh, scrapbook where the binder rings are and it sends the message to your brain that these two pages belong together. They're, they're part of one overall element. Uh, so I'm following the design quite closely at this point and adding some ribbon around the edges of this one. And I never did add a bow. I forgot to do that. And that might be something that I do when I go back. So you guys will be seeing, oh, here I am making another mistake. So see what I did there? I added the ribbon to the bottom, but now my outlines are on the wrong side. So I'm very carefully pull pulling this off and my Tombow tape runner is very forgiving in this way and all of the adhesive stuck to the, to the uh, cotton ribbon and didn't stay on the paper at all. So there's no residue or tearing or anything that happened there. I'm using my grid mat to help me place this a little bit up and I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not following the directions, although there are directions that tell you how far up this is supposed to go. So there we go. I've got my two pages and I'm going to keep them together as I pull this design together so that I can continue to use the grid lines and also refer to the other page for where these are supposed to be landing. So there we go. I just have to trim off some of the edges because it seems like some of these pages are longer than others. I must have cut them incorrectly when I trimmed off those designer um, strips. So now the last strips that are left to do, oh, I have to replace my tape runner. So there we go. The last thing to do is to add the blue strip and I'm just tucking it behind the pink no reason. I could have layered it 
the other way. I tend to layer my papers. I don't butt them up against one another. I like the look of them tucking in underneath of each other. And now I have these two large mats that will hold some of my photos. So here's the three by four and the two by and and the four by six and then the other four by six. Oh, I did have the right photos for this one. Look at that. I did have the right ones and the right orientation and everything. And so obviously I'm not really wanting to put that tea that teacup sticker alongside of the photo of Fee with the crocodile because it doesn't really make good sense. So um, I'm going to make this one different. I'm also not going to use the t -rific sticker as the title. Instead, I'm going to take this gray uh, piece of chipboard that has the word fun on it, and I'm going to make it become a dimensional title piece. And so I'm going to start by outlining it. That will really emphasize the letters in the word fun and help them to stand out from the page. And when you outline, I like to keep my wrist pretty straight and just move my arm. You can see me, I'm moving my wrist a little tiny bit here, but I'm mostly moving my arm, especially for the straight lines. There we go. And now I'm going to outline around the outside edge of this piece as well, just to give it a little bit more emphasis. There are some really dark pieces on this page and I want this title to, to um, get your attention. Here I am back to that strip of little tiny pieces of foam adhesive that I had pre-cut for the other page and I'm using some full size pieces and then I will use the little bits in the little spaces between. I want this to be popped up on top of that navy blue pattern and uh, cast a nice shadow and have some, just add some visual interest to this title piece. I don't want any of that foam adhesive to show even when you look at this from an angle. So I'm just going back and trimming down some of those pieces that I was a little bit afraid might show. And now I'm going to take off all of those backing pieces. Oh, it is tricky taking off those backing pieces. I find that these little ones don't want to stick to the project. They want to come off. When you pull the backing piece off, the foam pulls off too. So they're not the easiest things to work with, but they do the trick for a tight little spot if you need some foam adhesive. Of course, you can cut down any size foam adhesive to make it the size that you want. So you don't have to buy these little tiny ones that I don't, I don't know if I'll be buying them again, to be honest with you. I do like the big hexagon ones that Stampin' Up! makes, but uh, these little ones are not, don't work for me as well as I was hoping they would. Sorry, I forgot to zoom out here, but I'm just following that page up at the top of your screen there and doing the exact same things except I have a different title. I'm using all of my scraps here and using the little edges of the foam adhesive packaging. Not the packaging but the little edges of the foam adhesive and sticking that photo in place and while I'm at it I'm just popping out any other gray embellishments either that the that the design calls for or just kind of ones that I think I'd, I'd like to use. And I'm really sorry that I didn't zoom out here. What I'm doing is I'm taking all those gray banner pieces and I'm lining them up just the way that they did in the design above, but then I felt like it, that wasn't enough. So I added two extra pieces of that bright blue color because the blue chipboard pieces had some triangles too that happened to be exactly the same size. And so I really like how that looks. It adds an extra bit of interest to those pieces at the top. And now I'm using my Tom aqua glue to glue and it's just a liquid glue um, to glue these pieces together and as I glued them I realized wait a minute I'm doing this wrong and so um, I didn't want to have little bits of glue on the page so I didn't want to move these around too much but I did have to scooch them over a little bit because um, I put those down wrong 
So, and I actually kind of like it better with the three blue triangles anyways. And it, it kind of, it gives some asymmetry and some visual interest over there. I just, I really like how it looks. It's good. And having a feature like a banner that spans across the two pages, again, re-emphasizes that idea of this being one full page to take in, as opposed to two separate side-by-side -side pages. I'm adding some embellishments, and I'm winging it here a little bit because I went so off the plan with my titles, uh, with my title that I, um, you know, need to, to take some liberty here in how I decorate this one. So again, this part is the same as the design, but I'm going to overlap my journaling. I like things layered and overlapping. And so that's my own touch there. And I'm using the same piece of, it's basically one of the three by four cards. Um, I'm using that, but I'm going to underline. It looks like they have some typing on there. I'm not going to put nearly as much journaling and I'm going to um, underline it instead. I'm adding that little strip with the date. I use my roller date stamp and a little blue bow and that is exactly the same as the page above. And now my journaling says, we knew, who knew that we would get to hold a baby croc on our trip to Cuba? This croc farm is right in Moran, not far from the mangroves. And that'll be another page in my scrapbook, the trip to the mangroves. So I'm just underlining that to make it look like it belongs on the page. And now I'm also going to pop up this journaling piece too. So I have the smaller photo popped up on the left-hand page and then the journaling is popped up on this page. I like more than one thing to be popped up. If I do some popping, gotta pop twice, at least twice. Now I'm going to outline all of these little triangles. It is a little bit dangerous outlining on your finished project because, well, for obvious reasons. So I'm being more careful than usual here. And although it is sped up to four times the speed, you can't tell, but I actually am going slow as I outline those pieces. And here again, I'm going off script quite a bit because I wasn't able to do the same embellishing as the designer of this page did because my page is not about tea. And so I can't use the same embellishments and I've set it up so that my journaling overlaps with my page. So I'm just taking some of the extra embellishments that are left over because I'm now on the last page. So I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to need these pieces for something else. So I can just go ahead and, and embellish by my own kind of design. Now I'm going to use those same sticky keys from October afternoon to add to this title. Instead of just fun, I'm going to call it fun with Crocs. I'm having a moment right now where I'm hoping that those are actually crocodiles and not alligators. I'm pretty sure they're Crocs though. So there we go. And now I'm going to work on the insert. So technically, I would just wanted to, to note for the record here that two hours and 23 minutes into this process, I have completed three double page layouts. And now I'm just working on my inserts, which are totally optional. So I could have been done right here. This kit obviously is a huge time saver. Even personalizing it, this is much, much, much faster than I typically scrapbook. It usually takes me two hours to do a, a comfortable single page layout that usually has one to three photos on it. And so this is obviously a much, much faster way to scrap. Now these Becky Higgins page protectors, these are just, um, I forget which designs they are, but I've cut them down. I found two that have one that had four horizontal three by fours stacked over by the holes, and then one that had two vertical four by sixes stacked over by the holes. And I don't know which ones those are, but I just cut them down and uh, sacrificed two thirds of them in order to have these inserts. And here I'm, I think I'm just checking um, my photos to see, I don't know if I'm checking for dates or what it is that I'm doing here, but, uh, I just had to check something on my computer, obviously, cause I reached across like that. And now I'm just looking at what I have to put inside of these pockets. 
And I am referring a little bit to the handout. Like the handout does have um, samples in there, although I didn't take pictures of it and post it for you right now. At this point, I'm so far off of the theme of teacups that I'm just kind of doing my own thing here with the inserts. Oh, that's what I was doing. I was printing one more photo. I don't know how, but somehow I forgot to, to print this one. I had planned to, but forgot. And so there we go. And now this one was included in the uh, sample. And so I'm kind of doing the same thing. I'm adding some outlining that was not in the sample, but I think that kind of makes it mine and pulls it in with the layout that's on this page, that this page will be facing. And now I'm using True Story instead of the one with the teapot as the, as the filler card. And I'm even going to do some journaling on this. It just says, we were all very brave. And that's all that it says. Okay, so I don't know how much time went by, but I have my three base double page layouts here. Let me just show you. Here is, this is actually the second one right here. And I really like how these turned out. This one is nice. I did do some personalizing, which I would have described in my video already. And here is the first one right there. And then this is the last one, which has two inserts. So here it is without the inserts. And then here are the two pocket page inserts. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put these pages away for now, but sometime in the next couple of days, I'm going to come back to these pages and make them even more my own. I just wanted to see how quickly I could do some basic pages that look great. These look great just as they are, and so this gives me a sense of what I could do if I didn't want to do, if I just wanted to do a really quick job, but before I put these in my albums, I'm just going to take a little bit more time, and I will tape that process as well, and I will link it in the information section below. Take care, and have a really great Scrappy Week! Thank you.